the I think I'm live now. Yeah, we're live. We are live. Yeah, let me check my other phone. Head gospel. And and I think I should see myself live. We are live, Dr. Anya. The whole world is so live. <laughs> we are live. Um on the hell gospel. So what you want me to do is to go in uh, and I'm, share it on. I'm a specialist. Okay. Right. Live. I've shared it. I'm waiting for a request. I have sent it. And I'm going to send it to Yes, Have you seen it? No, not yet. And I no, don't want to leave. I don't want to leave this link again. Someone should share internet with me, please. Share Wi-Fi with me. Wi-Fi. Mm. Wi-Fi. I'll share it to Anya specialist. Has it been approved? I cannot tell. It's okay. Just give me some moments. Hello, everyone. Sorry, we are trying to, to get everything sorted with Dr. Anya's side. So please bear with us. Bear with us. We need to share to um, Dr. Anya's audience also because they also have to benefit from it. So please bear with us and invite others. We are starting at nine, so we are just doing all this um, sharing of sharing stuff. Have you seen it, Dr. Anya? Come in. This is it. Oh, see why. Uh, send me this in again. Let me see. Take notes, yeah? Okay. But yeah, it's past code now. What's the past code? What's the past code? Don't want that picture. Take, take notes. Sorry, guys. Dr. Anya is just trying to get um, stuff sorted on his site, and then we will start. Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful week. I'm talking In, to the whole world. Invite others as we join. Invite friends, invite family. We are live, Dr. Anya. I know, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, thank you. People are waiting for you. I'm coming. Tell them to wait. Oh, my Just goodness. He's coming. <laughs> coming. <laughs> right, let me just read the comments. Right, guys. Good morning, morning, morning. <laughs> morning, Evangelist Debbie, good morning. Rosemary, good morning. Omoye, good morning. Oh, Sister Fobulufola, good morning. Dr. Anya is busy, so <laughs> we are just uh, waiting for him. Morning, okay. morning, morning, everyone. Really glad to have you guys here. Um, and um, Dr. Anya in the house, he always makes me laugh all the time. But <laughs> he's ready and I'm ready. And it's two minutes to nine. So we still have two minutes. <laughs> two minutes to. Are you ready, Dr. Anya? I think I'm ready. I'm ready. Have we got it on your page? Yes, we are on my page now. Very so... good. Very good. 
So, Anya Specialist. It's okay. on, it's live. Is it live on Anya Specialist? It's live on Anya Specialist. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Reduce the volume. Uh, Reduce okay. the volume on that on that device. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Your, your, tell them to reduce the, the volume on that device. Um reduce reduce the volume. Yeah. Okay. You can even okay. Bring your head down a little bit. Your your head is cut. Okay, so I'm good to go. Bring your head down a little bit. Beautiful. We're ready to go. Good morning, guys. Good morning, family. Hell Gospel family. Good morning. Click the share button. Share it to everybody. Inboxes. This today's topic is very important. And to be honest, I'm really glad. And <laughs> since yesterday, I've been on with my brother, Dr. Anya, and I've just been laughing my head off. <laughs> he's, he's a very funny person. So um, I'm glad to be here um, today. And the topic is diabetes and the eye. And there was no other person to do this topic than my brother, Dr. Anya Kalu. I have so much respect for you, Dr. Anya. Really, really, I'm just telling you sincerely, you are doing an amazing job and you are just representing Christ on earth. So thank you so much for what you are doing. Yes, thank you. So much. <laughs> right. So we, we are happy to have you um, today to talk about diabetes and the eye. And I'm not going to say a much. I'm just going to reduce myself to minimum and allow you to take the stage. What is diabetes? How does diabetes affect the eye? What can I do? These are the three important questions today. What is diabetes? How does diabetes affect my eye? What do I do? So many people ask questions in the week and they're saying, oh, I need to learn about this because my mother has it or my father has it. Some of us, your, some of you, your husbands have it, your wives have a diabetes. It is an epidemic. That's what whole health says. It's everywhere now, it's ravaging lives. But people are not still aware of the, the, the depth of the, of, the, of the damage that diabetes is doing in the lives of people, especially in Africa. And because we do not educate ourselves, we are not creating enough awareness. People are still dying from what they shouldn't be dying from. So I'm gonna leave the stage for Dr. Anya to tell us all about diabetes and the eye. So Dr. Anya, welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you, Heidi. It's always been a pleasure having um, the time to talk with you and uh, to discuss about the health gospel. It's health, but it's gospel. Why? Because it's good news. No health education comes without good news. So today we will be looking at diabetes and how the diabetes affects the eye. Fundamentally, we know that diabetes has a problem with glucose and how the body uses glucose. So if I want to use the terminal, medical terminology, I would say there is a problem with glucose metabolism, which is due to either low quantity of insulin or the effectiveness of insulin is reduced. So there is the body that produces glucose. Glucose is there, but not where it lies. So what happens? It accumulates. And it is this accumulation of glucose that puts up every one of us into trouble. So fundamentally, diabetes is a condition where there is a problem with glucose utilization in the system because either the insulin is not enough in quantity or enough in quality of the service. So I guess fundamentally that is the definition of um, diabetes. I am not a diabetic specialist, I'm just an eye surgeon. So I will limit myself to the basics. You know, traditionally, diabetes is to be divided into two types, 
type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes. And in those days, it used to be age, um, you use age to differentiate between type 1 and type 2. Sometimes you hear us say insulin dependent and insulin non dependent. But obviously, now literature has it that even the type 1, which is insulin dependent, is not just for the young people. We also see the insulin dependence in the elderly people. Who knows? The definitions will change very soon as they are already changing. So the fundamental thing is that the body is not being able to use the glucose it produces. And before me is the eye model. So what happens is this. The diabetes is there. The other disciplines in medicine are all attending to their own issues about diabetes and themselves. Why I'm rolling the eye because this is where it makes me cry, it makes me uncomfortable seeing people going blind unnecessarily because of diabetes. Now, anybody who has been diabetic for up to 10 years, you can be sure between 25% to 50% of them will have changes in the eye from the diabetes. If the diabetes has been there between 15 years, and above, up to 25 years, you can be sure that almost 75% of them will have problem with the eye from the diabetes. If the person has been diabetic for 30 years and above, it's almost practically every one of them will have complication from the diabetes. The one thing is clear and sure, all studies are in agreement. But if we keep the level of glucose well under control within the acceptable normal range, that there are less chances of diabetes affecting the eye. Oh, well, so far so good. I think maybe we should look at how does diabetes affect the eye. This is the eye, a, well, the mother of the eye, so this is the front of the eye. The front of the eye we can see, and this is the back of the eye. This is the optic nerve as it goes to the brain. So the eye actually is doing the looking. This sends the information to the brain, and the brain does the interpretation. So if you could, uh, could hear someone say, the, the brain is the one that sees why the eye looks. So if the information from the eye doesn't get to the brain, the brain, the person is actually not seeing. So diabetes starts affecting the patient from the front of the eye. We look at the eyelashes. The eyelashes. In a patient with diabetes, especially when it is poorly controlled, because if it is well controlled, you may never know in your lifetime that the person has diabetes. But if it is poorly controlled, you could see the eyelashes and the eyelids are prone to recurrent infections, unnecessarily recurrent infections. And if there be already existing problem with the eyelids and eyelashes, in Nancy, it gets worse. Reason is simple, which will explain uh, maybe by a sentence or two, because the content of the blood, which brings food, which brings um, antibiotics, natural antibiotics to, to, to protect the body, and also which helps the body to, to heal itself without bleeding. Those body are all coated with sugar because the sugar is now high and it starts coating every part of the, uh, the content of the blood. So the content of the blood are not functioning optimally. So look at the problem here now. Insulin is not functioning optimally. The contents of the blood are not functioning optimally. And what happens next? The blood becomes thickened. So we call it increase in viscosity. And it's that increase in viscosity that causes the problems that um, 
we'll be discussing later on. I want to show you this. You see, this is a blood vessel. It's big, very big. If you look at your hand, especially the, those who are uh, athletic, you will see that you will see that veins in their arms are so large. Yeah, that's good. So because it's large, it has wide openings. But as these veins now enter the eyes, and I'm going to open up this, as you enter the eyes, you can now see they are getting smaller. As you now go to feed the very organs, they get extra smaller, extra smaller, extra smaller, extra smaller. Now, the big ones we saw outside, the walls are big, but the ones that now feed the organs, the walls are just one layer thick. And that one layer thick makes it prone to all the complications and challenges that will come from diabetes. Give an example. If you are chewing something, Whatever it is you're chewing, granite, garea, if you don't chew it properly and swallow it, it will bruise your throat as you swallow it. But if you chew it properly and allow enough saliva to get into it, when you now swallow it, it will not bruise your throat. So imagine what happens to the blood vessels, the thick blood flowing through them is busy bruising the internal walls of the blood vessels. The bigger ones may not complain so much because they are thick. But the ones I showed like inside the eye, which is the type you'll find in the brain, which is the, fine, the type you'll find in the heart, which is the type you find in the kidneys, are so thin walled that any small bruise to them will cause harm. And in the eyes, it will cause the myriads of harms we will mention. So we've looked at the eyelashes and how that is going to affect the eyelash. Now you see this. We usually call this the black of the eyes. And we call this the white of the eye. It's a model though. It should have been white. But because of my model. So the black of the eye is naturally black. The white of the eye is actually white. The black of the eye is black because of this structure called the cornea in front of the eyes. Now, this structure is crystal clear and transparent. That is why we can see this, the organ inside, see the structure inside now. If you're looking straight, you might mistakenly think this is the black of the eye. It's not black of the eye, the cornea. And if it's not clear, the patient's vision is drastically reduced. So when diabetes becomes uncontrolled for a very long time, it begins to affect this cornea. Let me show it again. See, so this is the cornea, the curvature here. It's transparent. If you don't look carefully, you may not see it. You only see the structure behind it and call it black of the eye. Now, if this cornea is affected, especially in a person with diabetes, poorly controlled for a very long time, this cornea will start losing its sensation. This cornea is supposed to feel pain. Whenever anything goes to the cornea, it's supposed to feel pain. So when the sensation is reduced, you can have an injury without even knowing. You might be rubbing your eyes and your own nails can prick your cornea. You wouldn't know. If the diabetes is under control and there is other injuries to the cornea, healing of the cornea becomes a problem. That's why the so-called black of the eye will not, I mean, black of the eye will not turn white. It didn't turn white as it were, but it has not healed itself. So that's why it's no longer transparent and clear. 
it should remain transparent and clear. And if you log into the Anna Specialist Eye Clinic Facebook site, you will see one of the videos we did about how to help in poor healing corneas. This a technique we use in doing it, and God willing, it will surely heal. Well, if it is gotten on time. So for the external eye, you see there's poor wound healing and also there's loss of sensation. Then also, the nerves, look at the muscles, the muscles that move the eye. So if I want to look in one direction, the muscle moves. If I want to look in the other direction, so that muscle moves. If I want to look above, the muscle moves. So these muscles are all supplied by the nerves. So when sensation abnormality, which is called neuropathy, the neuropathy now affects the eye. So you could have the local half past four eye we'll talk about. One eye is looking one side, the other eye is looking the other side. You can even have the whole eye closed, the droopy eyelid in diabetic. Why? Because the supply to the blood, I mean, to the muscles that control eye movement, eyelid movement, might have been affected. And the ones, as common as it sounds, of course, um, when, if you compare it to the general population, it looks like it is not common, but it's actually common when you walk into an eye clinic. Those in the general um, diabetic clinic may not see so much, but we in the eye clinic, we see it a lot. And by the time you see someone with droopy eyelid, and most investigations you must do is to be sure the person is cleared from sugar problem. Let's go to the next one, which is cataract. I removed this, and I'll remove the cornea. I'll remove the iris. We'll come back to this. This is exactly what we'll call the black of the eye. And what is left is now the lens. The lens is the lens. This is the lens. The lens is what focuses light. And this is the natural lens that God put in the eyes. So we'll call it the crystalline lens. It's clear. But in diabetes, that is poorly controlled, there's higher chances of developing cataracts in this lens. So that what was crystal clear start becomes faint, 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 faint. You see it turning whitish, whitish, and obstructs my vision. My vision is clear before because the lens was transparent. Now the lens is now getting opaque opaque, 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 and he lost my vision. So the patient with tetra, I mean diabetes, that is poorly controlled over time, is, um, and not especially those who are more than five years or 10 years with diabetes, they, are, they run a higher risk of developing cataracts. Of course, we know aging still remains the highest um, the highest one should put to cataract development. But amongst those who are diabetic, they have also a high chance of developing cataracts. Now, I'll keep the lens aside. Vitros. I will discuss the vitreous and the lens together. And also we'll discuss the optic nerve. So I will remove the vitreous. This is gel-like substance which does so many functions in the eye, one of which is to maintain the shape of the eye. So I'll keep it aside for now. So this is now the optic nerve, and this is the retina. These are the vessels. Remember, these vessels inside are very tiny, and they are only protected by one layer of supporting wall. One layer of supporting wall. Look at what happens in diabetes. You just swallowed what you chew without chewing it properly, and it bruised your throat. Imagine a blood flow that is thick and destroying the single layer of 
the blood. What it will do is this. When the supporting wall is destroyed, it will form an art pouch. You see it pull out. And you see something coming out, looking red. We call it microaneurysm. So this usually will show that something is going on. That this diabetes you've been managing for this number of years is beginning to affect the back of the eye. These are the back of the eyes. Now also, with the sluggish function and flow of the blood, this blood supply, the red part I'm touching, that supplies the organs can get blocked. And because these are nerve fibers, so there's no blood supply to the nerve fibers. So you now see what we call cutting wood spots, accumulation of debris that should have been cleaned up by, by, by healthy tissues. Because the tissues are no longer healthy, poor blood supply, you now see that they are dying off. Imagine if there are multiple places here, 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 here. So out of 100% of the retina, you could have like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, even to 70% of the retina unhealthy. The next that will happen if this process continues unabated without stopping it is the blood vessels will now start leaking food. It's what we call the blood retina barrier. It's a barrier that doesn't allow what is inside the blood to come out. So the blood retina barrier starts breaking down. The cell starts giving, start giving, giving way. The tightness between them start loosening. And what that will do is this, the fluid of the blood, not blood itself, the fluid of the blood, which includes the protein, the water, and the fat, will all pour out into the substance of the eye. And we'll call it exudates. Now, healthy tissues will absorb the water, but will leave the fat. So when uh, the eye is examined, you see the fat, but the water has been absorbed. But when there are no healthy tissues around, you see it, both the water and the fat all over, and the eye is swollen. This yellow spot, I show the yellow spot again. This is the yellow spot. We call it the fovea for those of us that did biology. This is the portion that everyone uses to see sharply. And it's supposed to be having this depression. Let me see if I can get an angle that shows depression. Did I? I think yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. Depression there. Now, that depression is because uh, it, it does contain the thickness of the layers others have. So it goes straight to where the, the, the retinal um, pigments that receive information are. So it has the sharpest vision. Then imagine if there's this leaking of fluid all over and it affects this environment. It gets swollen. And if there are no surrounding retinal tissues to reabsorb it, that means the patient's vision is blood. Okay. You are looking at me now. Imagine if I use my marker and make a mark on my camera such that I mark on my eyes. Okay, I'm going to do my eye like this. And all of you are going to start quarreling now. Let me see how many people that will complain. If you are complaining, that is how the diabetic person is complaining because the area he or she needs to use to see sharply is swollen. Even if it's a small swelling, it's a swelling still. He or she is not seen clearly. So the diabetic person tells the kids, my children, my eyes are failing me. And they're like, mommy, we're not saying anything. The woman is serious. The man is serious. 
because the area that is required to see sharply the yellow spot is swollen. Right. Dr. Anya, I think this <laughs> the cell is too deep for the understanding. So maybe you, you just need to, um, I don't know, bring it down. It's too deep detail that they don't understand what you're, how, what you're So I think just come on, what you see, uh, what you think is common and what that they're supposed to know, like I'm diabetic, what am I supposed to know as a diabetic? about my eyes what am i supposed to look for okay i'm glad i had to do this yeah to detailed examination i mean uh, explanation because that's exactly what will determine what will happen when you visit the clinic yeah As diabetic the world health organization requires that your first visit to the diabetic specialist should correspond to your first visit to the eye specialist for one reason. Let's determine if at all there are any eye changes in diabetes and have a first document. If you have the facilities, take picture. I have facilities that can take pictures of the eyes and um, document it. The findings will now give us opportunity to divide you into no complication in the eye or mild complication in the eye or moderate complication in the eye or severe complication in the eye or the one we all fear the one that majority of the eye, the back of the eye is no longer healthy. And when that occurs, the eye will tell the brain, I need food, I need food, I need food. The brain will now stimulate the production of new emergency blood vessels. And these blood vessels can be produced within hours to days. And when they now start being produced here, at the back of the eyes, let me rotate this back, and put this iris back. So you now see, this is the supposedly black of the eyes. And you see, because there's no cornea, it is flat. So the emergency new blood vessels fuse up this place and they can easily bleed into the vitreous. This is the vitreous. They can easily bleed into the middle of the eye. When they bleed into the middle of the eye, they will be absorbed. And when they get absorbed, they form rows. And these rows, each time you move your eyes, they will drag the eye in the opposite direction. For example, you move the eye to the right, the ropes will drag the eye to the left. And what are these ropes? Bleeding that have been absorbed over time. And that can pull out the retina. The whole retina can be pulled out of its position. And that is where nobody wants any diabetic to go. There's something we need to also be in mind. The diabetic is still spending thousands of, well, Nigerian Naira, I'm in Nigeria now, to control this glucose. The diabetic is still spending thousands of Nigerian Naira, forgive me, I'm in Nigeria, trying also to control the eye complications. And when the complications occur in the eye, studies have shown that they are already also occurring in other parts of the body. Yeah. And the one we is the kidneys. Yeah. So the diabetic, is, is God, what crime did I commit? Yeah. Sugar is problematic. The eye is not joining the EQ. The kidneys are not talking. The heart. Oh, what has happened? Challenges with the diabetic patient. So 
why it's important to note that the first visit of a diabetic to the diabetic specialist should correspond to the first visit of the um, eye specialist is because we need to know the level of affectation. Damage. Yeah. We don't want any affectation in the eye at all. I don't want. My colleagues, we don't want. Now, if there are affectations in the eye, we notify all the disciplines. I notify the diabetes specialists. I notify the renal specialists. I notify the, the, everybody involved in diabetics. Actually, they cancel us. They cancel us. Actually, they cancel us. I notify them because we are in trouble. We are in trouble. We are in trouble. So we will look at. Uh, but Doctor Anya, let me ask you a question. Please go ahead. So many people in Nigeria or Africa as a whole. I always say Africa because if you come to Europe, they will mm. send you letters, and that letter they will keep sending until you are ten. You understand? They mm -hmm. monitor it for you. You are forcefully being monitored for your mm -hmm. eye. If they find any changes, they will send you straight to the uh, ophthalmologist immediately. But yeah. in Africa, we do not have that monitoring um, um, program. We do not have any monitoring program. So you see people with diabetes that are, they just say, I have diabetes. All they do is take tablets. And they have no idea that, as you have said, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, they are having complications. All they do is just money to buy maybe glucophage or metformin and take. They don't have, how do, how do you see the diabetic population with the eye? Are they getting blind? How do you then, how do you propose to help um, these people to know that just as you say, the moment they have diabetes, they need to have to look in the eye also. <sighs> Let me answer the first, uh, the second to the last question you, you asked. Are we losing the eyes? Yes, we are. Shame on us. Shame on the healthcare system. The healthcare system is skewed against the interest of the patient. I had to speak to a colleague of mine and I told him a diabetic is sick already. You should have a diabetic center that has both an eye section, a laboratory section, many sections of every unit that's involved in direct and indirect management of diabetes. How could you expect a diabetic to walk long distances to the laboratory and kill. After that, go back to the pharmacy, a long, another long distance and kill. By the time the diabetic is done, he, will, he or she will not come to the hospital anymore. At all. So we sent the patient away. The healthcare system is not friendly to the sick individual. So I, I told my colleague, we are the ones sending them away to the native doctors by our structured system that suits us, but does not suit the patient. We are the ones sending them to go buy metformin by themselves. Because by the time they come to the hospital, to the hospital they are sick, spending thousands upon thousands, and you need to hear pensioners are being owed so many months of salary. You need to know that, and it's so painful. I, I just had four obituaries, you know, close to me in the past two weeks. Can imagine how painful that is to me. So these people are sick. There's no money anywhere. So now you 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 come they come to the clinic, you give them a bill of twenty thousand naira. Where are they going to get the money from? Why they can walk up to the pharmacy and get me for me seven hundred naira and use for the whole month. So that you will see them our system is not helping the patient. Well, I'm glad there's good news because a lot is going on. The Diabetic Association of Nigeria is taking it headlong. 
and uh, I'm a member of the organization. And I tell you, it's, it, it, it will come out better. I think and I believe, like WHO said, your first visit to the diabetes specialist should correspond to your first visit to the eye surgeon, so that we we'll determine if at all there's any complication or not. If there are, at what stage? And what we now do then, we'll follow the first principle. Number one, educate the patient. Don't keep the patient in the dark. If it's so bad, tell the patient it's so bad. Talk to the patient. And the next person you must talk to is the family of the patient. The family of the patient, to the best of my knowledge, played the second most important role in controlling diabetes. Reason being that they are the ones that will provide moral support. They're the ones that will remind the patient it's time to take medicine. They're the ones that will take their vehicles and drive out to the pharmacy and buy the insulin if is needed or buy the metformin if metformin is, is needed. Meanwhile, metformin is glucophage. So if you don't talk to them, they will assume mama has typhoid malaria. I'm sure you're used to that. Everybody has typhoid malaria. If you're not feeling too fine, it is typhoid or it is malaria. And it's so funny. I mean, you're, you're wondering, who makes all these diagnoses? No, nobody. They made it themselves. They went to the pharmacies. They went to the uh, lab technicians or the lab scientists. And it comes up typhoid malaria. Yes. But then you've not examined the patient. You've not examined the patient. You don't even know what the person, the person has. You, you don't know the status of the kidneys. You've not even listened to the heart to be sure it's even between very well. So we sometimes mistakenly Maybe I should be blamed too because sometime I was practicing general medicine before I specialized in eye surgery. You know, we should also be blamed too because our approach to management of diabetes, you know, wasn't good. But today I must admit, I give it credit, credit to the Diabetic Association of Nigeria and a lot of non governmental organizations in my neighborhood. I have non-governmental organizations who are investing heavily their time, their finances, you know, their knowledge in educating the public. And the next person to be educated, I already mentioned, is the general community. And that's exactly what Dr. Edwin Charles is doing. Congratulations, I did for doing this. <laughs> we have to educate the general public. The diabetes is not about go to the pharmacy and buy 700 naira metformin and take. It is beyond that. Why? Because the longer the diabetes stays, the more the complications. Who monitors the A1C? Who monitors? We need to know what it is. We need to know the overall long-term control. We need to know, look at your legs. Some people say, ah, they have done me. They put something to me on the road to the farm and I matched it. My leg yeah. Yeah. injury is not healing. Yeah. Something is causing something. And that is vascular. In fact, most of the time it's vascular because yeah. I'm diabetic or other vascular abnormalities. It's not healing. So it doesn't but, want which that doesn't want your success in life. That is, you know, after your life. So the next Kanya, thing do, let's it, let's let's go back to the eye because it's is the eye. Um what are the what what can we do as um, maybe I have a mother I have a mother who has diabetes many of us have um, we have family we have people who have diabetes um, what should a family member do now that you're having this talk they are listening to you what is what are they supposed to do what's the next step now we've been established that anybody that has diabetes does have eye affectation. The longer your diabetes, the long the the more the uh, the, the it affects your eye and all the things you've um, you've listed. What can mm -hmm. family members do? Some of them they they don't know what to do. They don't even understand. Um, let give me let me give you a bad scenario. There's a health center I know I visited somewhere. 
The health center is like about three kilometers from where the villagers live. So nobody will go there. There's a general center, a general hospital I've driven into, and it was bushy. I couldn't drive into it. I turned my, my car back and I came out. These are the scenarios we will find ourselves. So you now, you are a family member. You are a friend. You want to help. Where are you taking this person to? You come to the specialized centers, which are always, always, almost always in the urban areas. And they are too expensive to approach. And they are too complicated. So even you as a family member, you might even get discouraged. Yeah. But the first thing you should do as a family member is to watch how regularly they change their glasses. A diabetic is ready to change his, his or her glasses up to five times in a year. Because the sugar, as the sugar abnormality occurs, it affects the um, need for glass, the power you need to read, the power you need to see. So you see, this person keeps changing glass. So if some, as an adult, I should use a glass at least more than one year, up to two years, if there are no scratch marks on them. So, but if in weeks, I'm already complaining, then something is wrong. Let the person go have a comprehensive check. Let's have a, a diabetic specialist see this person at least once in a year. Now, I, I was asked a question when I was giving a lecture in the Diabetic Association of Nigeria. How often should someone have a regular check? I said, let's follow the, the WHO standard. One, the first visit to the diabetes specialist should be the first visit to the ophthalmologist. After that, the regularity or otherwise or the visits will now be dependent on what is seen. If we see no complication in the eye, we can now say, so help us God. Let's see once every year for eye examination. If the complication is on the bad side, you can even see some surgeons saying, let's see you once in two weeks, once in one month, because of the fear they have. Yesterday, I did a what we call B scan on someone, and I note the man is diabetic. He has already lost one eye, and the only eye has, um, when I, I scanned the eye, I, I, said, I said, no, this is just beyond me. I had to call my my boss, I'm referring this patient to you. He's an only eye, he has cataract, no doubt. I would have done the cataract surgery. But because of what I'm seeing at the back of the eyes, this is obvious bleeding in the back of the eyes. So I refer the patient. So the family members are the ones that provide the money. This person that is sick is battling with mental problems. Depression, God, why me? We are Africans, please. So you will hear that. God, why me? And uh, this person is battling with multiple injections. If it's insulin dependent, it's painful. And when you now go to the hospital, they tell you it's not under control. Oh, you feel like your world is turning around. It's true. I'm mostly back home. There's this uh, craze about eating plantain and beans. That alone makes them really um, depressed because you can't imagine a human being sentenced to eating plantain and beans. And they are just depressed. They're already mentally, re they're really, really depressed. They're really, really low. Some of them are insulin and they are injecting, imagine injecting yourself every day. Or every they are day. This, yeah, this <laughs> new, sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, they are this new medicine also, it's injectable. So already the person is depressed. And in Africa, there is no support. Everything you have to spend your money There's to no do. government support. No. There is no sometimes regular family support. And I'm not sure there's any existent community support. No. Government support we, we need, uh, which we advocate, is this. Make 
let me say something, it may be a little vulgar. Someone said, why give condom free? Because of HIV. Why don't you give insulin free? These people have multiple problems to, to contend with money. And why don't you give them free from government? Then they come and sign and collect free insulin and, and use. You will see the joy will come up again. The control will be there. Yeah. I took a list time. A man has sugar close to 500. I kept postponing the cataract surgery because he was blind in both eyes. I didn't know the real cause of the problem. I told my colleague, look, I'm going in. That, that, whatever happened, let it happen. I took the man into theater, operated on one eye. By the time he came for checkup, sugar that was 500 had come down to 100. Everybody screamed. I asked man, what happened? The man said, let me tell you the truth, my son. Nobody in my family bothers about me. They only dump me when it's time for food. They throw food at me like I'm a dog. That was what the other man told me. So sometimes the family members are just fed up. You know, this disease that is not going. And, you know, we believe you go to prayer houses, you go to this, you go to that, and still the disease is there with you. What do you do? It comes back to knowledge. So education, like my boss would say, make sure you and the patient are on the same level of understanding before you commence treatment. If not, the treatment will be a failure. The person will be thinking of direction A while the doctor is thinking of direction B. Obviously, two of you will never meet together. So educate the patient, educate the patient, family and relatives, educate the community just like, like we are doing, and get hold of the radio. There's one thing that happens here in our community that is so sad. I don't know if it happens elsewhere. These are tutorials on health. People, you know, mount on vehicles and start advertising their medications that cures all. And I don't need to tell you how many people waiting for that for kidney transplant because of so so-called uh, tutorials on health of elixirs that cure all. We need government to come up with, 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 with um, a, a legislation. Stop some of these awesome practices so that we can protect our people. People are unnecessarily losing their lives. You ask if they're losing their eyes. Yes, they're losing their eyes. They are losing their eyes. They are getting blind. And Dr. And Anya, lining up for, for, for dialysis. They are, they are lining up for dialysis. You know, Dr. Anya, sometimes I, you, you do a program every year. I'm just saying it here in case anybody is interested, where he goes into communities and actually screen people's eyes. And if you have a community in your, your village, wherever you are, you want to help, you can contact Dr. Anya. And he can organize for you. He goes there himself. He has this small speaker. He talks to them about the eye. He educates them. People come out. He screens them. And this is what you can lies with him to do if you want to help your community. Because people are dying just uh, with, with this eye. They are getting blind. And imagine somebody who was struggling already to feed his children going blind. So there's no hope for that family anymore because he's already blind, he's become disabled. But by a little amount of money, we can protect them. We can get them on time and help them. So diabetes with the eye, Dr. Anya, what do we do? That was the third question. What, what is the treatment or what, what, what was the third question? What do we do? What do we do? Special education. Patient education, sit on it. Patient education. Then we educate the community. Educate the community. If, like we, just like you mentioned, maybe I should give out this information. I hope it's not too early to give it out. From the third quarter, that's from July, I and some good friends of mine will be providing some assistance to those who have diabetes. I've canceled so many surgeries because of diabetes, so we will provide assistance. And just like I mentioned, I know you and I discussed this some time ago. We'll go to your village. If you want me to use your father's house, we'll use your father's house. 
and we'll do it in your name. But this time, starting from the third um, quarter of um, July, I mean, of, of this year, that's from July, I and some of my friends who have agreed to assist at least the much you can, those who cannot afford it in the rural communities. So that aside, now in the eyes, like I mentioned, everybody must have good glucose control. Something is causing something. So let's just say a pipe is leaking. The pipe is leaking from behind, and I am here scooping the water from the house. What should I do first? Lock the leaking pipe. Make sure the sugar is under control before you start scooping the water. If not, all your efforts as an eye surgeon will be in vain. Yeah. What we do is, number one, what type of problem did you find? If it is the corner problem, make sure you use multiple and over. Let me use that uh -huh. um, terminology. So describe it. Use multiple maneuvers to achieve a clear corner. If it is cartridge that's affected, make sure you remove the cartridge carefully. Carefully. I mean the word carefully. Because cartridge complications shouldn't occur in a diabetic. It's difficult to handle at the long run. At the short term, everybody's happy, but at the long run, it becomes a problem. And don't allow the back of the eyes, uh, I'm going to show this again. Don't allow the back of the eyes to remain unhealthy. I'm zooming in so that I can see it again. The back of the eyes as it goes to the brain should remain healthy. That means any bleeding, any leakage, whatever it is, should be attended to immediately so that the retinal cells will not start dying. When they start dying, that's where the problem starts. Because the eye will report back to the brain, I need blood. The brain will cause emergency blood vessels to be formed. And when such happens, you're going to have these fragile emergency bloods that have been formed and they will start bleeding. And it's what we call the 90 day glaucoma. If it starts at the back of the eye, Approximately in 90 days, it will come to the front of the eye, what you call the glucosis iridis. And that is not what you want. It can even occur even shorter time, from two weeks to even longer periods of even two years or even more than that. So that classically, approximately 90 days. So we have what's called 90 day glaucoma. So don't allow any part, let it look smooth as it is. Don't allow any part on the back of the eye. Any part you see, locate where it's looking from and use laser light and coagulate it. Stop the bleeding. So you are saying take your loved ones to an ophthalmologist. Take your loved ones to an ophthalmologist because they're not going to stop the bleeding by themselves. They won't even know what is happening to the back of the brain. So please take your loved one, take yourself to an ophthalmologist. Also, if you want to help your community, I'm stressing it again, it will be in your name, but you can contact Dr. Anya to come and carry out eye screening for your community in your name. You can do it in your father's house. He will come and do it there for you in your name. You have that at least your community members are being checked. They can diagnose diabetes there. Some of them have high blood pressure problems. You know, that is a way of helping your community. Because I know we blame the government, government, government. For how long can we continue to blame them? Those people, I don't think they care about anybody. So we have so to care about, about ourselves. Government caring. Uh, uh, I depress, I'm going to clear this point. It's not about government caring. Government cares, but government cannot do it alone. Government cannot do it alone. You know, we had an argument, and I told someone, we have enough hospitals already. We don't need to build any more new hospitals. We only need to improve the services in the existing hospitals. Make sure 
with her, this skill acquisition, not BSc. BSc to me is nominal. You need skill acquisition. So in BSc, will not teach you how to cut an eye. But you need to go learn extra, acquire a skill, mentorship. So if government, to me, government's part is to learn the laws. And number two, put the enabling environment, employ the manpower. But what of the manpower employed? Improve your skill. Improve again. Add to it. Add to it. So that in five, in 10 years, in 15 years, your skill level has improved because whether I like it or not, diseases we are seeing now will take us by surprise in the next few generations. Mm -hmm. I wonder how our children will cope when they grow up. Mm -hmm. So if you have a woman, a mother, a father, a relation that has diabetes, um, what, what, what should we say to them, Dr. Anya? What is your words to anybody with diabetes concerning the eye? Diabetes is not a death sentence, for Christ's sake. Diabetes, you know, is only if you mention it that people will know you have diabetes. It becomes a problem when you neglect it. I asked a patient, when was the last time you checked your sugar level and the person starts thinking? Why are you thinking? If you did it in May, you did it in May. If you did it in June, you did it in June. Why are you thinking? Because... In his heart, he knows he has not been regular with his check. Also, be regular with your medications. Now, there's one funny thing that happens. You come to the hospital with sugar of 400. The doctor deems it necessary to give you a particular dose. Sugar comes down to 100, and you're giving a maintenance dose. You now go into serious dieting, and serious exercising. These are other modalities of treatment. The maintenance dose that was given to you will now suddenly become a bad dose. So if you have any plans of going into lifestyle modifications, serious dieting, serious exercising, let the doctor know so they can adjust the dose of the drugs downwards so that what was a maintenance normal dose will not become an overdose. Now, if you have other issues, other health concerns that you fear may be affecting you, let your doctor know. For example, if the kidneys are not in good shape, you know, what was a low dose automatically become toxic to the kidneys. So I'm saying diabetes is not a death sentence. Diabetes is not, a passenger openly said he was diabetic. Mm -hmm. And he has been taking care of himself. There is so, a maze, diabetic. In fact, if you declare what you have, people will help you more. Yeah. People will encourage you. People will even give you some money. At least I know how many times I've had to you know, pick up bills of people for their diabetic control. Just because they opened up. So if you keep it to yourself, you're more likely to suffer more complications than when you open up. And meet your eye surgeon. Let him do a comprehensive eye check and see where you stand. From there, we can now start deciding if it is three monthly check, six monthly check, or yearly check. I Thank think. you very much. Thank you. And where can people locate you? And how can people locate you? Ah, uh, I think on our Facebook page we have the annual specialist eye clinic Omaya. I guess that would be easier to locate. Dr. Anna is the name. I'm a consultant ophthalmologist and a PECO surgeon. And um, by the grace of God, we keep acquiring and improving our skills so that we can serve the community and the nation better. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Um, I think my take home message today to everybody is the diabetes will affect the eye. If you, if you have diabetes, it will affect your eye. But if you control the diabetes, I'm going to use the example Dr. Anya said, if a pipe is leaking in your house and water has filled your house, there's no point scooping out the water, scooping out the water, because the pipe is still leaking. So as you're scooping out the water, the house is being filled with water. We need to seal the pipe, which is the diabetic control. So if you have diabetes, the primary thing 
is to control your diabetes, to, to stop all the complications that come with it. Sorry, you want to say something? No, no, no. Okay, so you need to control the diabetes so that we can then say you have reduced um, uh, a bit, uh, uh, complications. But if you leave the diabetes uncontrolled, it's like a leaking pipe. It's going to affect your eye, your kidney. People are lining up for dialysis. We don't even have dialysis centers anymore. People have to book in advance for dialysis. People are dying while waiting for diabetes. People are getting blind. So we need to get the message. We don't need to be a medical doctor to educate your mother or your father to take their tablet to check their blood sugar. These simple basic things, you don't need to be a nurse or even a healthcare assistant to be able to do for your, for your relation. They need to be in control of the diabetes and you have to help them. Don't say, my mother is always complaining. My father is always complaining. They will complain because one, they don't understand themselves. This, 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 this diabetes has come to stay. You are telling them, take that, take tablet, like um, my family was saying, I'll hold this tablet all the time, tablet, tablet, I'm tired. You encourage them. Come for life. It's like you have killed the person. Yeah, you encourage them. You are there to encourage them. Mama, don't worry. No, if you don't take this medication now, we'll start having problem. Do you want to have problem? She'll say no. She'll now understand with you. You don't need to sentence her to plantain and, and beans. She can eat other healthy things. So let's work together as a community. It's really important as a community to help one another. Thank you so much, Dr. Anya, for coming today and teaching us about the eye. Thank you so much. And it's Definitely 10 o'clock, so we are... We, thank you. Thank you. Right. So thanks, everybody. Share, share, share the video and help somebody. And if you want to do any campaign on I in your community, contact Dr. Anya on, her, on his Facebook page. He'll be ready to help you. It will all be in your name. At least you put smiles on the faces of those old people in your village. So take care and God bless.